Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube magazine, The Spiritual Citizen. My today's guest is Ms. Shikha Khanna. She is a passionate shutterbug. I met her when she was still in college. And I was fascinated by this young girl with a camera around her neck. I requested her to give a workshop to the Culture Club ladies. And till date, I used every tip which she gave us so many years back. Since then, she has climbed the ladder of success. Today, she is known nationally and internationally for her work. She prides herself in being called a portrait photographer. She can specializes in helping mom entrepreneurs in honing their technical skills. She has captured memories by expecting mothers and the soul in a child's eye. She has also captured uncanny moods of artists, of dancers, of musicians, of poets, to name but a few. She is a prodigy of International College of Professional Photography. Let's talk to her about the bug in a shutter bug. Hi everyone, I'm Shikha Khanna. I'm a portrait photographer from India for past 20 years. Good morning Shikha and welcome to this Spiritual well, Citizen. Welcome. Thank you so much. You know Shikha, it is said that no place is boring if you have had a good night's sleep and a pocket full of unexposed films. So please, <laughs> so please tell, tell us something about your education and what was it which motivated you to become a, a photographer and take it up as your career? Uh, so you want the real story or you want the educational story? I want the real story, everything honest. Lovely. Okay. So the real story is that it happened by accident. But the over a period of time, I've realized that my father was a my father was a hobby photographer, and I think I've got it from him. That realization came much later. But just to tell you that I have studied um, from a Delhi public school. I'm Delhi based uh, uh, photographer. I studied in Delhi public school. Moved on to uh, doing an honors course, Sri Venkateshwara College in sociology, and happens to be that got very very fascinated with wanting to join the the so-called cool photography club because you're in that cool age and you want to attend that cool photography club at that time. So I went ahead and I did that. Um, I took out the film and I went to expose it. Happened to uh, get the first prize uh, in that competition. So that's the accident that happened and I got into photography. And then uh, prize after prize, in intra-college, inter-college, I got the Saraswati Award for uh, the Venkateshwara College which they never got in photography from the university twice and then uh, an international course got launched in India. It was called ICPP in affiliation with NIFT and that course was the first time in India an educated or like an education was coming for photography for three years. I did the degree with them and I became a, a educated photographer. That's my story of being the photographer, education so, Other than your father, is there any specific photographer nationally or internationally who actually caught your eye? Uh, I think those all came later. For me, it was just the journey that I was taking with the camera at that time was uh, fascinating. And of course, as I mentioned that I wasn't exposed to the world of photographers yet. And this course came and my fine arts department teacher said, you must do it because in India, it's rare to get this course coming in. So I think when I was growing up, there wasn't. But yes, on the way, when I started understanding photography and being in the field, there were people like Ansel Adams. There were people like Richard Avedon. There were people like, uh, uh, you know, Prabhu Das Gupta from India. Who are these photographers we really uh, looked up to? The Annie Geddes became, at that time, I was fascinated with her because photographers that influenced uh, me to think towards good pictures. So, you know, Shika, your work as a portrait photographer is uh, actually very effortless. So, what is the source and what is the space from where you derive this ease? And, uh, you know, also, uh, what is the process by which you decide that uh, a particular capture is your best photo? Um, I don't know. To answer the first part of the question, uh, force, um, I just think that again, I've taken it from my dad, uh, the ability to connect and to love people, to ability to see a lot of positive around people. That makes me connect to people. And the minute the connect happens, uh, it's not my ease. 
uh, all the apprehension drops off from the subject side you know the subject drops the apprehension they don't feel very conscious they, they're not stiff and then it's very easy for me to maneuver into getting them into a comfortable pose and then once you're comfortable once you're joyous i don't think so anybody can look bad anyway so all that work is done by my connection more than my cam right you know most yes. of the time as a photographer you really capture very vulnerable moments of yeah. your client and uh, there has to be a certain uh, element of trust between you and the client yeah. so yes. basically what i want to ask you is what is your philosophy and your value system uh, as a photographer because uh, that's something i guess would establish uh, the trust and i think the trust factor comes is because i do not enter one with any judgment total spontaneous person i emerge spontaneous spontaneously and i absolutely work with my intuition and i think there's some blessing that i received maybe from my grandmother or my dad or uh, really having an absence of mother i think i was raised by many many mothers so a lot a lot of that you know that trust has come from that love that i've received and i can pass it on very easily so i trust people very easily i don't take a lot of time to trust people and that's why i think i receive it back uh, in return so not a problem with trust with people at all mm -hmm. uh you know i actually interacted with you when you were in college and even you were very very young and yes. uh, i also uh, yeah i also realized that um, you know seeing this young girl with this uh, fancy camera around her neck that whenever you are using your camera and your lenses there is almost like a conversation between you and your subject despite yes. the fact even you have your 10 team members everything around is very still and you know yes. as a spirituality they say that it's in stillness that you find yourself and that's yes. the place where you find your soul and your universe and it's almost that kind of stillness you know which i have felt when i have seen you working so what uh, i want to ask you here is you know when you see your photographs and you feel that a particular photograph is really fabulous but uh, the client feels otherwise so basically who is the person who decides that which is which is the moment which needs to be kept and it happened to me i was not doing anything consciously so over a period of time i realized i don't know what i see um i i refused to listen to people's chatter even when i was young when they would tell me uh you know hey guy this angle is not good uh don't shoot me from this angle maybe this dress doesn't suit me all i did was i went with my whole spirit and today that you're speaking about spirituality the whole spirituality you know something happens to me when i'm in my me and my camera there something really happens to me my whole world dissolves even if i was a mom and i had left a child behind uh you know Uh, for two hours or three hours, everything around me dissolved, including my subject. Things just dissolved, and my gut guided me to say, "Click now, click now, click now, click now. Just don't listen to what they're saying. Just click, click, click. Get them, uplift them, praise them, fuck you know, hug them, have patience, have everything." And that guided me. And you know, when I always left, I felt as if you feel after meditation. You all, I always felt like that. I couldn't tell this to people that. what i feel when i end my shoot because everything dissolves for me when my camera is in my hand and what happened in result was people just saw something they've never seen about themselves absolutely grateful and full of gratitude with this blessing of love that is always showered uh, on me my clients i guess you know that is why they say that uh, if you follow your passion uh, this is what happens as you're saying that everything around you kind of as you say that it just disappears it dissolves and you are in your yeah. own space and from there you get your energy and uh, the the source uh, from which yes. you get your inspiration and which is definitely out of the world and not from this world so that's really that's beautiful that. that's very beautiful the way you have put it and you know shika you are a new mama and uh, not too new but new enough <laughs> and uh, new enough yeah. yeah so yeah and it is you know we can actually understand that you know as a young mother uh, you yes. feel that you know a child's a smile is almost like sunshine and rose petals all wrapped into your arms so yes. you know you have taken photographs of innumerable little babies 
So yes. how do you capture the soul in a child's eye? I mean, though they are j- naturally soulful. And also, you know, yeah. one technical aspect to it. How do you stabilize your camera when you are taking a child's picture? Because that's crazy, isn't it? So I'll, I'll te- tell you a few things about it. Uh, what, one, yes, I'm please. I'm an 8-year-old mama. I have an 8-year-old son and a 2-year-old son. So I have a mom to just correct that. I'm not so such a new mom, but yes, I'm still pretty new. Uh, and I still have to cross many stages. Two, that um, I think it comes from a belief and fascination for life. I was very fascinated with life itself since I was very young. My fascination that, my God, this, this life has come out of this woman, this mother, whether it's an animal life or it's a life of a child. I'm very fascinated with what has been created inside and how. And that fascination brought me being passionate about babies. And I kept on building that trust in people that I'm all here to celebrate this life. And these are your pictures. This is nothing to do with me doing anything with this. I'm just celebrating this life. So I think that was one uh, thing that my determination one towards discovering new life my passion for it my fascination for it all these things brought me very very close to getting those awesome pictures that people thought were just outstanding uh you know and so it was all the view that i was what you view in life you create you like so if you view a fascinating baby you will create a fascinating baby it's not possible everything else is technical very important to learn but your soul will only come if you view the world with your soul and you know how do i stabilize them very tough and i have a very beautiful incidence to explain my teachers australians who are my mentors um and at that time i was studying in film cameras you know uh, there were no uh, auto cameras or twenty thousand pictures to be shot there were 36 films to be shot when i was studying uh you know uh, 36 shots in a film and oh, at 33, we used to really stop because you're like, oh my God, if the best shot comes in the next two, we can't waste it. So we were not very, very open, like quick, quick, quick about it. We always thought before we shot. So I've been from a generation, a blessing that we were told to think and use the film, you know, wisely. Because it just had 36, right? And then the concept of reversing it and putting it back wasted a lot of time. And the moment was gone. So my teacher was there and... I was dying to get his uh, feedback and he was like, I, he was everything. He, he taught me what emotions was. And Greg, I was just like, Greg, I was dying to get everything from him uh, to understand that, you know, why are you not commenting on my pictures? Like, I know my pictures are better than other pictures. Why are you not commenting on it? And I used to be frustrated, but he would just refuse to comment. In fact, he would do the opposite things. You know, he would just pick up the uh, pen and put it on, on and on my uh, pocket money saved a print that I took out and he would just say honey just throw it in the dustbin so one fine day when he was leaving and he just told me would you like to talk to me so I was like yes I'm trying to because you know you just pays everybody's work except mine and I know I'm not so bad so he took me uh, in, in the meeting room and he opened one picture that I took of a girl and uh, you know uh, he just opened that and he's like I just want to tell you one thing that uh, if somebody photographed my daughter the way you photographed this girl, I would give that photographer a blank check to put whatever price they want to put because this is so priceless and it is so difficult. And that made my day, you know, like it meant everything to me. But he's like, the only reason I was not telling you because you were developing, you were the youngest here, everybody was 30 plus, 35 photographers. I didn't want it to go into your head that you already have a gift of being around children, figuring it out, getting it sharp. Because at that time, you also had to get it sharp. You had to get everything right just in 36. Not in 2000 and choose one and edit it. We did have Photoshop. We only had a dark room. So I think that blessing was always there. And because I was taught on that camera, it's very easy for me to have on digital and phones and everything just to keep taking these pictures much easier. Because I apply the same rule. Focus on the child. Get your... Uh, gear like a breathing, you know, your, your, my gear is like I'm breathing. It is not in my hand. Like breathing is not conscious. My camera is not like consciously there. It's just me mindfully there with the child, taking care of the child, figuring it out. Of course, practicing my light and technique so much that I could do that easily. And, you know, Shika, uh, more often than not, we see that, you know, 
uh, I mean, you you are definitely interacting on an almost everyday basis with this kind of an emotion that when people expose themselves in front of a camera, they actually feel that you know they're they are completely being ripped up, ripped apart, and their real self. Normally, the real self, which is the soul, is always so beautiful. So that is kind of getting exposed. And uh, that too in front of a camera, something to which they cannot talk and there is everything is silent around when the shoot begins. So how do you make them comfortable with their real true self, uh, which is what you're actually capturing? So what I want to know here is what, what was that moment when that comfort came where they were willing to expose themselves to your camera? Actually, they don't come to know that I they're actually posing. I think all my clients have told this consistently. What the shoot is over? It's uh, already done. Uh, what happened? So one, I don't take too much gadgets. I have mastered my natural light in a way that gadgets scare people. Um, what scares people, I think, is not only that they've not even reached the point of saying that it's the self getting exposed, etc. What really uh, scares people uh, is basically. The fact that, you know, we are very used to an eye contact, Rachna. We are very, very used to making eye contacts with people. And that eye contact breaks when the camera is in front of the photographer's eye. So now that eye contact disturbs us. It disturbs us a lot that, you know, what is the photographer seeing? What's happening? Am I looking okay? Where are they looking? What's happening? It's a subconscious thing that happens in our mind. And I'm very consciously always broke. So when I shoot, I generally keep my eye contact with my, uh, you know, subject. I'm talking to them. I'm cl clicking. I'm looking less through the camera. But, uh, you know, I I got used to uh, maneuvering it in a way that I do get my stuff. I look in. But when I'm looking in also, I'm making sure they're distracted to the point of, you know, uh, they do not realize. And that happens so quickly with me that they don't even realize the pictures are done. So I've done many such things because for me, photography comes later. It's your comfort. It's your upliftment. It's your sense of celebration that is first. Yeah. So basically, you try to kind of uh, treat them a little psychologically also. Yeah, that, yeah. you know, then they feel, start feeling relaxed. Yes. So tell me one thing. So how do you handle a situation where, you know, a client has a preconceived notion about how they want to present themselves and you know that you have a better plan? How do you, how do you handle that? Mm, I just tell them to be themselves and uh, I don't know somehow I have the way of people trusting me they trust me I just tell them that be your, like just get ready and be yourself and let the daily routine go on so I don't uh, uh, like and then when whenever they've tried to show me something the only thing I've told them is this is not you I'm here to find you through my camera like I can't try what you're trying me to say but probably I am not, like if, if sometimes I do get pictures of celebrity pictures, can you re replace it? But I'm like, this is not you, you know. The face is not yours. The body is not yours. The home is not the same because I go in people's homes and shoot it. Why not create something that is yours and that's worthwhile, that's your memory. And this, uh, this shoot becomes like a memory that becomes like an incident in your life, which is remembered by you forever and not something that was forced to be created on somebody else's soul basically that is their uniqueness isn't it yeah. uh, a replica that's, that's is always, yeah and a replica is always a replica you can take out 10 pictures and say make me look like this one but that's not going to be unique to them individually and personally absolutely. isn't it absolutely so, Absolutely. you know, it is uh, nowadays photography is almost considered as uh, a creative art. So, right. uh, and it is also said, you know, you don't actually take a photograph, you make a photo, you make a picture. So, yeah. where Shikha is that fine line where a photograph becomes a piece of art? It depends. Uh, I think for me, uh, the, my, my work is my art anyway, because I live like, like my work, like an artist i've never approached it like a commercial photographer because for me emotion is an art as well to be able to get those emotion out so a lot of times in my work i've given pictures of girls like little girls swirling around and they turned out to be all blurred and like clients have really liked it uh so i think the art is more in the eyes of the person who buys it and the art in the eyes of the person who creates it so i don't know whether there is uh, uh, anything that we can say this is art and this is not 
yes of course commercial photography sometimes just part of photography can all that is not a part of art but when emotions enter a zone then i don't think so uh, uh, it's the person who perceives it and the person who creates is the one who uh, defines whether it's art or not so i think emotion part is an important part to for it to become an art piece it should relate some to somebody it should touch somebody it should laugh, make somebody laugh even a kissing picture of a mother and a child can be a piece of art because it makes stirs up some emotion in somebody so i think that so uh, what's the important part of uh, that line that you're talking about so shikhas every picture is worth a thousand words and yes, that's true I, you know uh, the beauty lies in the eyes of beholder i mean Uh, the way it is for any other creative art it's it's completely yes. upon the perceiver and the person who is the artist how you perceive yes, it yes. right right yes. so shikha uh very long time back you have given me some tips in anand gram how to take photographs yeah. i'm going to pass yes. on those pictures to you but today i request you to give at least two tips we all know that you are capturing light not the picture but everybody has a mobile phone so please give yes. my listeners two tips on how to capture what you are saying in a thousand i'll give you i i'll give you two three things that can go because i teach iphone photography as well so and i tell people that the biggest um, i think mistake that we do is that uh, we we see something and we shoot something all we have to know and i tell to explain how but all we have to do is bridge the gap between what we see and what we shoot and then we come closer to the subject so so when you take a picture and the phone is with you i think from end to end everything that is part of that picture should be consciously done to visually activate yourself and your visual sense becomes very active you tend to see end to end and every single thing in your picture has to be put by you willingly so that's step number 1 and you know step number 2 is photography needs painting with light without good light there will be no good photography just like in a dark room you can't take a picture if it's totally dark you will not take a picture because the uh, uh, the phone or the camera is a light catching device that's what i can say these two things keep in mind every single thing in a picture should be yours and consciously put there and to do keep light into your mind there are many many factors that i can talk about but these two things if they go right i think you pretty much got a great picture and i must tell you one thing shikha 20 years back you gave the same advice and <laughs> the... <laughs> yes so it yes. May, yeah so it means you are as confident uh, way back when you were a little girl as you yes. are today So that's really thank marvelous. You. So thank you, Shikha. Thank you for this uh, amazingly great interview. I had a fantastic time, and in fact, so I was uh, I was almost taken uh, back twenty years to Anand Gram when we were doing yes. the first workshop with you. I've just touched that after twenty years, still uh, you remember. So my biggest success is that what I taught twenty years back stayed with you till today, and that's my biggest success that I did. do everything with my full heart and parted the knowledge that was needed for any bit of progress and that's been my truth and that's why my blessings in life and i continue to be like this first of my life that i will give what i can to uplift people any which way they want to whether visually creatively emotionally whatever it i can do to do it through my work is been my mission and it's not changed in 20 years it's only becoming intenser and denser with life so that's what i can say So we wish you all the best uh, from so the much. spiritual citizen, and we also know very well that uh, a good picture is always a great memory, and uh, it is always so close to our heart. Thank you once again, Achy. Shikha. Thank you from the bottom of Thank my heart. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Achna. Uh-huh.